Thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I'll share with you my techniques and tips on how I put the rich colours and the details in this part 2 of the portrait of Alfie. Be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Here's where we left it in part one. So now it's all about putting the rich colours on. So I use the Canon Dash White and these are the selections of the colours I've used before. So we're using the same colours as part one, but actually freshen it up with the Canon Dash White. So basically that's what I'm doing to create that freshness is putting this really vibrant white underneath and then glazing with a similar colour I did with the underdrawing. Now if you haven't got this Caran Dash white you could use the Faber Castell which is really good and then what I'm doing basically is just glazing over the top with blue, red and yellow. So I'm working on the extremes now, so I'm going for the darkest area, I'm using the Caran Dash Black which is very rich in vibrancy, so working on the lightest area then the darkest area. Now the grey I'm using here is the same colour as the pastel matte grey board I use, which 706 is the colour. And then I'm using the Carbothello Black as well to blend, so I'm using the Caran Dash for the richness and then blending it with the Carbothellos. And I'm just sort of letting them go and just sort of feeling my way through and creating that texture underneath and just glazing over the top. So it's a case of putting the white down, glaze over, white down, glaze over. Now some of the work I've done on the underdrawing, I'm leaving in so that's shining through. So that's the purpose why I do the outline and underdrawing because it prepares the way for when I start putting these rich colours on. It makes it a lot easier because all the hard work's been done because you've got everything in the position and it's just a case of really enjoying putting this freshness and detail in. It's just a matter of really squinting your eyes to see the values, open your eyes to see the colour and then just work through it. So I'm trying to work on the whole, so I'm just being aware of everything around the area I'm working. So I'm sensing Alfie's personality and his energy and trying to put that down rather than details, but trying to get that richness and that feeling to come through even more. So what I'm doing is building up blocks of colours and shades and the details get finer and finer as you progress so it starts off quite blocky and patchy but then as you progress it tends to get more and more sort of refined but it's getting that colour and the feeling right first and then you can put these subtle details in. So I'm using the black and the greys to get some sort of value in there and then just glaze over them with these primary colours now the blue I'm using most of is like a true blue, it can't be mixed. Now ultramarine blue can be mixed by adding a red to this blue, so in areas I'm just adding red to make it a sort of more of an ultramarine blue. Start to put this deep black now around the eye, this is like the darkest areas of the portrait. I'm adding blue and red together to create a purpley black then and then adding that black to start with around the eyes then using burnt sienna and then a bit of cold red and again that blue and it's a combination of that but there's not much detail as you can see so I always say paint what you see and don't worry about the detail not being there if you just paint what you see it, 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 when you look from a distance it all sort of merges and it looks realistic because the human eye fills in the gaps sort of thing. Same with the nose here, you can't see much detail at all. So I, I just painted what I saw and just felt the energy because in every element of the portrait there's energy there. So I just felt the energy there and I did actually look at a reference from Google of a nose 
uh, and then just you know just sort of fill in little bits of gaps where you know where I couldn't see the detail but if you just be loose with it and just more or less paint what you see it all sort of looks right at the end and at a distance and it all merges and, it's, and it looks realistic there's little speckles and sort of dots on noses so if you just relax and just like I say paint what you see and just put these little dots in and that it just sort of shapes up in the end now in this area I use mostly what I've done with the underdrawing because it's quite loose and it's very subtle I've used the color of the board that's shining through some of these subtle colors I've put down so all I'm doing is putting that richness here and there but mostly it's same as what I've already done on the underdrawing so that's what I mean about doing these sort of procedures like doing the underdrawing drawing and the outline because it's like you build it up and you can use what you've already done and it, it sort of creates really interesting textures and subtleties just slide it down to real time now so you can see me putting this detail in, in here just using the carbothella white just to map out the actual hair and just feel your way putting more pressure where it's lighter less where it's sort of more mid-tony so you're varying the pressure of the pencil it's very lightly done and then just look at the holes so I'm, I'm squinting my eyes sensing the value and also the, the feeling that I'm wanting to sort of project and then once I'm happy with these marks I will glaze over then with certain colours just to get that sort of feeling right so here I'm using that blue that true blue and then it needs to be more of a purpley blue or more like ultramarine but the reason I'm not just using ultramarine is that using the red and the blue together it creates different subtleties some some are more redder some are more bluer and it creates more interesting feel to it rather than just using the actual ultramarine blue I've used a bit of burnt sienna there with brown uh, and then you could add blue to that and create nice shadows because burnt sienna and blue or brown and blue make nice shadows or greys and so I'm working those in but I'm feeling my way through just letting that pencil move to how I feel how it is you know it's just, I just look at it and just let it happen let that, that feeling go through my body out of my hands and the movements just happen it's ever so strange to put into words I don't think about where I, what I'm doing with this it's just all feeling and that comes with practice um, but the more you let go and the more you just have faith in the feeling you're feeling and the colours you see in, the more it sort of just sort of expresses itself through you. Now some areas are more chroma or glow more than others, so I always add that little bit of lemon yellow to it to create that sort of glow. And that's a big tip for you because not only you have to sort of be aware of the temperature, but it's also what parts glow more than others and also what parts are sort of deeper in tone so this stage is all about getting the values right the chroma right the temperature and the details so there's quite a lot to do but it's a lot easier because I've done all the hard work before and on with the underdrawing and it, it's just a pleasure to do because you're mixing with what you've already done underneath down to real time so you can see how I'm freshen up areas now I'm very lightly putting it on in places pressing on in other places where it needs to be whiter but some areas need to be even whiter still so I use this stick here from Rembrandt put that white in and then just blob in the actual pigment and then move it around then and get the subtleties with the Caran d'Ache again 
and then just freshen it up by adding that little bit of blue on the top just gives it that freshness and it makes that white come alive then rather than just putting it straight from the stick. If you're enjoying this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. I just jumped to this area now it's the same procedure as what I've done with the other side just you know just mapping it out with the white and glazing over with wet red blue or yellow um, but here I'm putting the darkness in so I'm putting that black in but I'm mixing the burnt sienna or purples so you have to feel in the black because some areas in the black are warmer and some are colder so you have to sort of sense that as well and it's all about getting an overall feel always I always looking in the mirror as well so I'm forever looking in the mirror checking it see how it feels from a different perspective but I'm working on the whole so some areas I'll be working at one point then all of a sudden I'll just jump to another area so I just let my instincts take over I don't just work from one part and then just finish that and then move on to the next I'm working on different areas all the time I'm just letting my instincts take over see the overall effect I want from the portrait is when you look at it you can't focus on any one detail it all feels energetic and emotional and you just sense that that's the subject because when you meet a person you don't look at the details of a person or an object whatever you're painting you feel it you feel what it feels like and that's what I want the finished product to feel like it's actually there because the the thing is if you focus too much on detail there's a chance that you can over render some areas more than others and it and it looks like bits of details everywhere so you when you look at it you see details in the nose details in the eyes but you're not actually feeling the whole thing at once so it could really feel separate so I believe that everything's got a, like a oneness feel to it so that's what I'm trying to create with my work and that's my aspiration as an artist is to be more and more sort of looser but more and more energetic with my work. Just like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons for the wonderful support every month. I can't thank you enough, it really means a lot to me. If you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below. This portrait of Alfie will be on Patreon at some point. It'll be a narrated video. We slowed down so you could see every mark I make and every pencil I use, so it'll be the whole footage. Usually about four hours long, but you can forward to whatever part you're working on and you can see it in more detail. Just line it down to real time now so you can see how I've done this ear. It's such a treat to do with all these different subtleties of colours and different temperatures. But what I'm doing here is using the Caran Dash White again to get that vibrancy. I'll glaze over that shortly. But then what I'm doing is using the brown to create um, and refining the hair. using different white here I mean this is the Carbothello white it's not so vibrant uh, so if if there's an areas that's more sort of desaturated I use the Carbothello white but if it's more sort of richer and vibrant and fresher I use the Caran Dash white but this is the pace I work at so I don't rush I don't I take my time really enjoy just let, being in the moment I've got a a motto that says you know it takes as long as it takes so I don't rush things I'm glazing with the actual ultramarine blue here because it's more of a purpley color then I'm mixing the burnt sienna with the blue now blue and burnt sienna makes lovely grays so you know it gets really nice and subtle but then I'm using the yellow ochre and the lemon yellow there to create more of a greenier feel to it so there's so many different subtleties and colors in this ear it was so fascinating to do 
That's such a joy. If you enjoy this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. Just speeding up this area here because it's the same as principle as what I've done above. Uh, you know, using the the Karen Dash white for the fresher areas, Carbothella white for the more sort of desaturated areas, and then just glazing over with the primary colours. Now I'm using a grey white here instead of white to soften up this sort of texture of the fur here. Now I've got that through you doing backgrounds, so to use this for backgrounds a lot because it makes it really soft and it's a very chalky pencil. So mixing that in with what are the colours I've used, it makes it really soft and fluffy feeling to it. Just adding that little bit of highlight here and there makes all the difference and getting that overall balance of light and shade and subtlety really. Now to cut down on adding colour over colour to create a certain colour, I've used a Payne's Grey here, which is like a purpley grey colour, dark grey colour. So it's ideal and it's a very similar colour to what I'm looking for. So here I'm putting the texture in on the nose, uh, you know, little bits of dots here and there. Uh, here I'm just putting a bit more black in just to get the shape right. So spending time now putting the details in. So I'm going around the portrait, checking on what needs to be done. I'm using a bob stick here, well used for my oil painting, uh, which is really good to lean on uh, because if I put a uh, glassine paper there, it would cover up the portrait and I need to see the whole thing, you see, while I'm putting these final details on. Now I'm using that Payne's Grey here and I'll just glaze in with it here and there just to create that subtlety. The, the number of that Payne's Grey is 770 from the Carbothella range. Just warming certain areas up as well with the Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna Blue is superb really for creating warm greys. So it's just feeling the temperature, feeling how it it uh, feels overall and, and checking from one area to another. So you're comparing and then you get a feel then that it needs a little bit of here and a little bit there just to create that life. But just putting those little highlights here and there does make a massive difference when you're putting these final details in. Now if portrait's your thing and you want to know how to create shadows I have got a free class that you can find the link in the description below and it talks all about how I use a colour wheel and how I mix the colours to create shadows and it's really good for anything you do really landscapes, pets you can apply this principle to everything so it's free class and it's in the description below the link is so please check that out now I would suggest looking in the mirror, so we'll have the mirror front of you but the back towards the picture so you're looking over your shoulder at, so you're looking at a reflection of the portrait and it brings out imperfections and if you take a photograph on your mobile phone as well that sees things in a different way and you're surprising how it brings things out that needs to be changed. Thank you so much for watching the video right till the end. I really appreciate that. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Um, now this will be on my Patreon at some point, so please check that out if you want a longer, slower and more in-depth version of this. I've really enjoyed doing uh, Alfie. It's been a tr really treat for me to do. Uh, they've got lovely colours. I mean, these colours are really fascinating to actually create. Now, if you're interested in seeing any more of my work, please check out this video here.